Today's episode, we're gonna talk about how you teach a junior golfer, whether that's in a group setting or individually, kind of the ways we go about it, some do's and don'ts, and you know, an education really on, on how you how you fit that bill. I think as a as a professional going through the foundation degree, Matt, you don't necessarily get taught specifically how to teach juniors. It's just a generic, you know, delivering content for a golf lesson. So when you're in a when you're in a group setting with a class, maybe you're at a school, a school you've never been to before, how do you go about um, delivering those sessions to those to those children? I think the main the main thing you're trying to do when you're you're targeting a junior a group session is you want to make sure they're safe, correct safety areas, make sure that no one gets injured, you want to make sure that they're predominantly having fun. You want it to be the highlight of their of their week, don't you? You know, you want them to keep loving golf, coming back and um, yeah, enjoying enjoying the sessions has got to be the first and, and foremost thing. You've got to get on their level, I think, you know, getting down on their height, you know, if that means or it looks like you're down on your knees and helping them um, get the club into the right place and high-fiving them, getting on their level, really showing that enthusiasm, being energetic and yeah, really trying to encourage that fun development. It doesn't matter if they hit a poor shot, if they miss the golf ball, actually just want them to be there, don't you, yeah. at the beginning. So would you say that your, um, your main ethos when you first go into to a group setting is to make sure that, yes, the golf fundamentals are important, but you're there to make sure that, as you said, it's the highlight of their week. They want to come to to do to play the game, but they come. They would really want to enjoy it before they actually start to take on any of the any of the skills. Absolutely, I think you have to. They buy into you as well, Elizabeth. You're the role model. You're the you're the person they look up to. You're that advocate of of being the golf professional. And um, yes, you set out your your values, and you want the fundamentals. Of course, you want them to learn how to hold the club properly create a triangle if they go home to mums, dads, parents and what, what did you learn today? Well, I've learned how to do this. But you want them to be doing it with a big smile on their face talking about it and um, yeah, I think you have to understand and remember that you are that role model. If you go in there and your attitude isn't quite matching theirs and you're a little bit flat or you're a bit that way, then they're not going to build that rapport or that relationship with them, are you? you know, you've got to, yeah, as we said earlier, be on their level, enjoy it. It, it. The fundamentals are important, of course they are always important, but actually it's more about the games, the fun, that the the high fives and the little bit of competition that juniors love as well, you know? Yeah, I think you could you could go into a school, couldn't you, and have the um, the right coaching points. You could have all the information that you need, but if you can't relate to that group when I use an example of, I've got 30 children, my first few questions to those children are, have you ever played golf on the Nintendo Wii? Have you ever seen the golf club on Fortnite? You're trying to get onto their level as quickly as possible, get them to relate to the game, even if they haven't played it before, get them to relate to you. Absolutely. So, like, what sports do you play? And, and really getting down to their, why they're there to in, and for them to enjoy as much as possible. So if you look at it, Group-wise, you're sort of going more holistic. You're trying to cover a broad, broader range of people. You've already touched on maybe slightly individually of getting down to their eye level. Lots of interaction, lots of high fives, and and very good positive feedback. How do you go about? To say someone comes to a kids' club session now. They've come from you know maybe a school. They're coming into a different environment that they're not comfortable with outside of their school setting. How do you go about? making sure they're, they're comfortable at a new surroundings. What do you do to, to, to make sure their first experience at a golf club setting is, is a positive one? Yeah, absolutely. I think at school, as you say, they're, they're comfortable. It's you're on their turf, if you like. They're, they're used to that school and you're coming into their environment. As soon as they step away from that, and you've managed to get them into your environment, it is different. They're going to naturally feel a bit nervous, a bit apprehensive. Yeah. You know, we encourage parents to, to stay and to watch, you know, if that helps them feel more comfortable too as a, a bit of a safety blanket for them. Um, but again, I think once you get the session started and underway, you just spend a little bit more time before you collectively get all the kids around and tell them what they're working on, show them, present what you're doing for that session. You just go and make sure that they're settled in, you know, they feel comfortable, they, they know that this is their space, this is their club they're using. 
where the things are and make them feel a part of the session rather than, you know, should I be here, should I not, you know, or quickly want to get out of that environment, make a fuss of them, introduce them to the group and, um, yeah, really make them feel a part of it, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, one thing we do try and do heavily is try and remember their, and that sounds silly, but remember their names as quickly as you possibly can because that way you've got that relationship with them straight away. It's, it's very difficult, I know sometimes it's hard to remember all their names, but if you really can remember a name, relate them from their name, it's easier for them to feel comfortable. He knows my name, he knows who I am. Straight away it breaks down, breaks down a barrier, absolutely. So that would definitely be number one importance when when meeting a new a new, a new client, particularly a junior, is to, is to yeah, and that sounds quite simple, but learn their name. Absolutely. absolutely right learn their name ask them oh, what other sports do you play who's your favorite football team that's always a good topic for conversation yeah. and you strike up a little bit of a, a rapport there straight away absolutely. before you go into your yeah. into your coaching points that's the big thing i really we really want to get from from this and from this from these podcasts really is yes we know as golf professionals we're going to have decent information we like to think so, mm -hmm. but it's how you deliver that in a way that makes a child comfortable. And I mean, we know lots of coaches that deliver some fantastic junior sessions, and those juniors go along to those sessions to really see us, or well, talking about us, to see Jack and Matt. The golf kind of comes secondary initially. So I think if you want to, if you're looking to, to really help you, then grow your grow your business. It's a case of getting those kids wanting to come each week initially, get them to learn to love actually coming to golf and then transfer that over for a love of playing the game, learning the game. It's massively important. Absolutely, I think as well touch on that, that they'll then come to you and ask the question, you know, you, you might feel like, you know, a lot of the sessions feel a bit repetitive, like, you know, get the hands in the right place or there's a big gap between them, but you make it, you make it fun, don't you? You just have a little bit like, remember to get your hands closer together or remember your your balance but eventually they they will do that and, and they'll be like Matt Jack how do I do this or how do I do that and you can then see that they're starting to take an interest into learning to play golf aren't mm. they as well you know I think another another good point to make out is when they're at school you know it can be quite serious at school at times you know talking you know you, you, they spend a lot of time having to listen and really concentrate and yes they're going to do that within within the golf setting, but going back to looking at schools coaching, you know, we'll ask questions at a schools coaching. Good morning, how are you? I can't hear you loud. Say it louder, shout out, express themselves a little bit. You know, they spend Monday to Friday on these kids not being able to express themselves as much as they like to. And yes, they need to work within a constraint. We've got to have them behaving themselves, but we really advocate them talking and you know, having a bit of fun, being a little bit excited on the driving range after they hit a good shot. You know, oh, great shot, woohoo, high five. Not keeping it very strict and, and plain and boring. You know, get them to express themselves. Oh, I can come to golf and I can almost celebrate a good shot. I can react to a good shot. It's definitely something we advocate and something that, you know, a lot of, a lot of junior coaches or people that are looking to get into junior coaching should do. Not, I'll oh, be quiet, you're at a golf club. No, make some noise. Yeah. You know, get people to uh, draw attention to, to the session. Oh, what's going on over there? Those kids are having great fun, really enjoying it. Yeah. As we said, enjoyment first, yeah. first and foremost, and then then fundamental stuff. Absolutely, 100% agree. Definitely. I think as well, you know, another another thing to touch upon is, is what they wear. You know, there's that, as you say, you know, you should be quiet at golf golf facility or on a golf course you know, there's this perception i've got to wear a collared shirt i've got to wear certain trousers shoes just get them there have fun if they want to turn up in a in a football shirt on the driving range they're not harming anyone that's how they feel comfortable then make it make them feel comfortable you know let them wear the joggers and the, the trainers it's not going to be a detriment to them is it you know no absolutely not and they'll learn the etiquette as they you know as they progress through up the up the levels of the game and um, I suppose the final thing to potentially mention is if you're not enjoying delivering the session as a coach yourself, you're damn sight sure that those kids aren't going to be enjoying it. So as a junior coach, I think the biggest tip I can give anyone out there is 
regarding what's going on in your personal life, if you're having a, some issues at home or you're not feeling quite, you know, you're not completely 100% feeling healthy or committed on that day, you've got to turn up to those sessions with as much enthusiasm and energy as you possibly can. If you don't, you do risk alienating those children in terms of they might not listen to you as well and they might not, 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 not respect you, but might not be as engaged as they should be if you're not there with the right energy and the right passion for it. I mean, you look at, my son watches a lot of cartoons and a lot of stuff on the TV, those presenters on the television are so enthusiastic and you look at them sometimes and you go, huh, they can't be enjoying it. And I'm sure they don't enjoy it at times, but they, they turn up every day for their, for their auto slot and they are enthusiastic, they are keen, they are there to, to really put a positive impact on that child's day. And I think as a junior coach, you 100% need to do that. Get on the kid's level as quickly and as frequently as possible. It's, it's doable, absolutely. you know, but we haven't necessarily touched coaching points there really at all. You know, we, we know we, we know we can show anyone how to, how to hold it, how to set up, how to get the club on a reasonable plane, create some leverage, create some speed, but it's the way you get onto their level first. Get them to love it first, then you can take your coaching points further and develop them as golfers once you've built up that rapport and that relationship with them. Final piece to, to mention um, with regards to delivering junior coaching sessions is, your, is the language that you use. So we refer to at the end there about swing plane, leverage, creating some speed. You know, leverage is a big word that a, a seven or eight year old isn't going to understand. So it's it's finding little little niches and nuances you can use. So we refer to it as a, as a ping and boom. You know, what's louder, a ping or a boom. So they can... They can relate to it and using very simple terminology to get them to understand what you want them to do. But again, that's the, that, that coaching point comes after you get on their level, they're enjoying it, they're wanting to, wanting to turn up and, and develop.